Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today I'm talking about the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's just get right into it. Now when talking about the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, it's gonna function very similarly to the ISLM model that you may or may not have seen before. And so because it mirrors the ISLM model or it sort of stems from the ISLM model, I'm just gonna review that really quick. Feel free to skip that, or if you need a longer review, Got a whole playlist of videos on the ISLM model pop up in the top right. It's also in the description below. Feel free to pause and check those videos out if this review is not maybe as helpful or you're getting more confused. But for now, I'm just going to really quickly review the ISLM model. And so remember that the ISLM model comes from three different markets. We have the labor market. In the labor market, we determine sort of the full employment or the natural rate of output. And so it's going to be this pink line FE or the full employment line for the LM curve that's upward sloping. We're talking about the asset market. So that's the demand and supply of money in the economy that comes from the asset market. Then we have our demand curve or our IS curve that's coming from the goods market. And we can see that downward sloping curve in red. And so what we know is we know that the long run equilibrium is where all three of these curves intersect. It could be the case that these two curves intersect at a point that is not equal to the full employment line. So for example, suppose the IS curve or demand is sort of down here, then what's gonna happen is in the short run, we are right here. And so the IS and the LM curve intersect at a point that is to the left of the natural rate of output. And so what we would say is the economy is in a recession because this Y star would be less than Y bar. And of course it could be the opposite. If the IS and the LM curve intersect at a point that is above the natural rate of output, we would say we're in a boom. But in the long run, if we don't change the full employment line, we're always gonna come back to the natural rate of output and what's gonna adjust is the real interest rate. Okay, so that's just a real quick review of the ISLM model. And again, we're gonna use that to translate into the ADAS model. So now I'll go ahead and start translating. So if we think about this full employment line or the natural rate of output, well, that's gonna be our long run aggregate supply curve, which is gonna be again, this pink line in the right hand side for our ADAS diagram. Notice that in the ADAS diagram, we still have Y on the X axis, but now on the Y axis, instead of thinking about the real interest rate, we're thinking about the price level. Sometimes you might see it as inflation, whichever it is, the graph is still gonna look the same. Just make sure you pay attention to the axis. So when you're thinking about interpreting what's happening, you can interpret it correctly. So if we continue, the LM curve, that's gonna be our short run aggregate supply curve and our downward sloping IS curve from the ISLM model is gonna translate into our aggregate demand curve. So again, I've really just translated ISLM into ADAS, but functionally it's working the same way. And to show you that functionally the ISLM and the ADAS curve are gonna tell the same story, let's just take both of them, let's increase demand and let's walk through what happens in each model to really demonstrate how these things are telling you the same thing about the economy. Okay, so suppose we start in the ISLM model and I'm going to increase demand. So this IS curve is going to shift out. So maybe here is going to be IS2. And so what we can see is in the short run, again, the short run equilibrium is where the LM and the IS curve intersect. And so we're going to have the intersection right here. I'll put that in green. So here's our new green equilibrium with Y star in the short run, because in the short run, we're gonna be in a boom. The economy is running hot, demand is high. So how does the economy respond? How do we get back to our natural rate of output given that we haven't moved the full employment line? Well, what's gonna happen is the LM curve is going to react. It is going to shift up and it is going to shift up until we get to the point where we're back at our natural rate of output, but now at a higher real interest rate. So we're gonna go right here. So now the interest rate has increased in order to shift the LM curve back and we are back at our natural rate of output. So all that's happened in the long run, we've just increased the real interest rate. So now let's do the same thing with aggregate demand, aggregate supply. And so I'll shift the aggregate demand curve out in a parallel fashion. So here's AD2. And again, what's happened is our output has gone up. So our output is now above the natural rate of output. So we're in a boom. And what's gonna happen in order to sort of counteract this boom well, we're gonna have inflation, the price level is gonna go up. So if the price level goes up, what's gonna happen is our supply curve, our short run aggregate supply curve is going to shift up and it's going to shift up until we get back to the natural rate of output. And so all that's happened is we have the same amount of output, but at a higher price level. So what both the ISLM and the aggregate demand aggregate supply models are telling us 
is that if you increase demand, you are not going to increase output in the long run unless you change the full employment or the long run aggregate supply curve. All that's gonna happen is you're gonna get a boom in the short run, that boom is gonna to lead to inflation, you're gonna be back at the same level of output or the natural rate of output, just with a higher price level or a higher real interest rate. So both those things are sort of equivalent. And again, I'm just showing you that both models give you the same qualitative story and sort of trace out the same series of events for a given shift in demand or supply. So again, ADAS really coming from ISLM. Hopefully this helps you understand exactly how that model works. If you've got questions or you wanna see a different shifting of the aggregate demand and aggregate supply curve, please let me know in the comments. But if these videos in general are helping you out, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.